About an hour northeast of Adelaide is one of Australia's oldest wine regions called the Barossa Valley. It was originally settled by German immigrants escaping religious persecution in their home country. They brought with them their agricultural skills, including the making of wine. Today, there are a number of vineyards and wineries throughout the region. Over the years, I've taken quite a few different overseas visitors to the Barossa and now have a basic trail for a day out in the valley. First stop is at the Jacobs Creek Winery. This winery has high name recognition with British visitors as the Jacobs Creek wines are sold in supermarket chains in the UK. The visitor's centre was built with huge windows to take advantage of the view over the vines to the hills. The lawn dairy is a popular spot to enjoy a beverage or two. Next we drive through the Barossa's oldest town, Bethany. It's now a sleepy village with a few houses, a church and of course a winery. We continue up to Mengele's Hill and the lookout over the Barossa. Coming down from Mengele's Hill, we take the road into the town of Tanunda. Just before we arrive, we take a detour into Chateau Tanunda. It was established in 1890 as the valley's first major winery. For a while, it was the largest winery in the Southern Hemisphere. By the time the current owners, the Geber family, bought it in the late 1990s, it was all but abandoned. They re-established the winery, restored the buildings and the gardens, and even had a croquet lawn and a cricket oval put in. The grounds alone make Chateau Tananda a favourite of mine to visit. After the Chateau, we continue into the town of Tanunda for lunch. The final stop is at my all-time favourite winery complex, Seppelsfield. On the way, there is a popular photo spot across the vines to the little church. And then there's the family mausoleum up on the hill. This building fascinated me as a child. It was always up there on the hill, far away from everywhere and everything. That had an air of mystery around it. That view might have had something to do with reading one too many famous five books. Turns out that the Seppelt family member who had it built chose the position as the mausoleum looked over the Seppelt vineyards. The mausoleum is closed to visitors but people who stop by climb up the hill and they enjoy the view. Seppeltsfield was established by one of those pioneering German families, the Seppelts. Their speciality is fortified wines, ports in particular, which just happens to be the one type of wine that I like. The Seppeltsfield complex includes more than the winery, restaurants and cafes. The old stables have been converted for use by the jam factory Craft Collective. Local artisans can come and work there and there's an exhibition space and a shop. What had been the vinegary, the sepals made vinegar as well as wine, is now an artisanal soap complex. The road to Seppeltsfield has one of its most distinct features, the palm trees that line it. 
During the Great Depression, the owner of Seppeltsfield had workers plant the palms to keep them employed. In recent times, they feature in many an Instagram influencer's profile. A day spent in the Barossa Valley is an enjoyable exploration on what our big wide world has to offer.